Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Satisfactory. Um, oh, I'm doing something a little bit different here today. I've stepped away from streaming. We're probably going to do it weekly or something like that and not as daily. But I do want to play some games off the channel. You know, a bit of me time, that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, this is something that I've found myself playing a fair bit of recently. <laughs> we pull up here, you can see I'm five hours in. This is just my own factory. This wasn't the one that we had on stream. So I started this from scratch, and then they've implemented this Fixmas event, this Christmas event. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is, um, as I chip away at games in the background, once I get about like 5, 10, 15 hours into a game, I'll do another episode on that one. Um, so at least I can say, hey, look, I've been playing this, and this is what another 5 hours into the game looks like. Almost like a review in progress, I suppose, just to give you an idea. And then you can have a look at this and go, oh, well, this is what a, like, maybe a five-hour factory looks like, a ten-hour factory. And we'll do the same thing for, you know, other games and that as well. It's a, it's a bit of a solution where I can still play games myself. But anyway, so the Fixmas thing, I've only just started doing. I've only just sort of realized how it works, and uh, that coincides fairly well with uh, my timing. Now, you can see over there, it's that big bloody present floating in the, uh, in the distance. And if you look up, you might even see some more. They're just... Christmas presents are intermittently raining down in the game. And you can go out and you can grab them, and when you grab them, you get a currency. There should still be some in this constructor. Of this, this is present, right? Now, I researched in the MAM, which some people might be aware of. It's a t this is a building you can unlock through the course of the game, and you deposit certain things in there, like slugs and petals, and you can research all sorts of cool bits and pieces. Remember, I'm not super storied in this game. I've started it a lot, but uh, we're probably uh, pushing up against the edge of my real progress before five hours in. Um, this is what they've got here. The Fixmas event, right? So there's this whole cool tree. Oh, geez, what goes all the way down? Oh, it doesn't tell me. That's cheeky. Very cool. So I'm not here to tell you how this all plays out, but apparently this is going to run all through December um, as, a, as a pseudo Christmas event, corporatized. Um, but I'll just give you an idea of how to get it started. So I researched it there with a hundred presents. You just run up to those presents and then you grab them, you harvest them like leaves and that sort of stuff. And it's unlocked the giant Fixmas tree for me and the uh, Fixmas tree branch, right? Now I had a quick look here. These The research prerequisites for these ornaments and candy canes and that are things that I can't make, such as candy canes and ornaments. But in order to do that, I think we can unlock candy canes through this, and that's going to cost me 50 branches, which I figured out if I build a basic constructor, which is, you know, a one item building, you put your presents in and they will give you that, right? And it seems to make one to one. It's a one to one rate. And we're going to need, uh, well, I think it was a hundred. A hundred was the research requirement. Is that right? Let's just double check. 50. Oh, okay. We're nearly there. Hang on. Give me a second, I'll plug this bad boy in. We'll just sort of wait for that to tick. Oh, good. I, I thought I was going to have to go on a bloody uh, uh, a present hunt. And I'll show you around my sort of little factory because we, um, what we'll probably do is, you know, I'll, I'll do first looks of the games and that on the channel as normal. And in episodes as popularity requires. But, you know, quite often there's a game I want to play, but maybe it's not sexy on the channel. It's not that, you know, as exciting. Satisfactory is one of them. You'd think Satisfactory would be right, right at home on our channel, but for whatever reason, generally speaking, you guys aren't that interested in watching it on the regular. That's fine, but I like to play it. So I'll chip away at the game in the background. I'll get five hours up and then I'll just do a sort of update, you know, an in-progress video and give you an idea. And then maybe someone who's interested in Satisfactory would see my series of videos of a, uh, you know, a first look a five hour, 10 hour, 15 hour look at a game. Maybe that will help them understand the game a little bit better as well. So I'm still offering a service. Anyway, rant complete. We're gonna grab our little bloody branches and we're gonna stick them in. Oh, well actually, no, that's this is why I thought I was confused by a hundred because we wanna build the giant Fixmas tree. So you've got this section down here, the special events tree, uh, section, and that's the tree there. Now I've added it to my to-do list. So we need 100 branches, we need 50 reinforced plate, and 500 concrete. And funnily enough, technology-wise, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment, roughly. Um, I think it's gone through all the presents. Yes, so... Um, 
It'd probably more be more efficient to put the research in. Let's do that. And I'll just do another hundred. Three seconds, is that all? Okay, that's quick. Analysis complete. And now we've probably un we've unlocked the candy cane basher, which must be a weapon. New equipment, new parts. And, uh... Hang on, what is that? I don't know. We've already... Re node research. Don't worry about it. Yeah, candy cane. So let's try and figure out how to make a candy cane. We'll go... Usually I go to the manual bench to try and figure it out, but it seems you can't manually make these Christmas events stuff. So... Um... Maybe seeing the constructor recipe might be helpful. Let's go select recipe. There it is, candy cane. Same sort of story. It's just going to take three presents to make one by the look of it. Let's check the exchange. Yeah, one, three to one. Oh, okay, that's rough. So all the resources we have to find, it's not like you can make a mine to, to dig them out. Now, the other thing is, as much as the the things were falling out of the sky in the early days. I think they've sort of calmed down over over the course of time. We're going into a dangerous area. I'm probably going to get attacked by monsters. I don't really have a lot in the way of weaponry. I've got a chainsaw for chopping down trees, but that doesn't really do well against the evil elements. I built my space elevator. So that's sort of where I'm at now is just working on the space elevator. Okay, so we've got 15 from that present. Uh oh I hear a dude grunting at me. And I've got, like, no health. I think you can build med kits and shit like that in this. I don't know. I've just been focusing on getting my fucking... Recently getting my reinforced plate production plant up, which we'll go visit in a moment. Is my whole thing stopped at the moment? Looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, this is my plate plant. No good. Let's just see how many it's made for me. This is a very basic one running off one resource. But uh, it made five before we powered out. Okay. Okay. Let's get back down there. We'll cut some bits along the way. I think you get a higher yield when you cut bushes down with your chainsaw. I mean, it's mostly for trees because you can't, you can't drag the trees down ordinarily you can you can pick up the bushes with your hands let's see if we can avoid this bloke he's already aggroed on me i'm just gonna run away like a puss yeah so the space elevator is the current sort of objective i'll go through that as well because be, there might be people watching this that have no idea but essentially you you mine you know uh, outcrops like iron ore outcrops and you turn them into things and then the things get more complicated and you make more complicated things and uh, we're having power issues at the moment so how come have I accidentally severed my connection somehow how come some of my plants running and some of it's not hang on let's oh it looks yeah no I think I've made a boo-boo somewhere here hang on accidentally cut oh i did too look at this it's right here oh ah, hang on we'll have to fix this it must have been while I, when i was expending extending sorry my uh my power capacity over here i accidentally deleted the wrong line there we go now the whole rest of this plant should be going i mean they're red because they don't have materials in their input you're red because why are you red all that should be green. Hmm. Ah, the joys of troubleshooting. Yeah. Okay. We're green down there. We're red up there. 
mean, they're all running. Okay, maybe there's a bum connection up there as well. I don't know. Let's go investigate. And that's how it is, running your sort of little factory. Now, you apparently you can unlock vehicles and that later on. Trains, trucks. Oh, there we go. Okay, so they weren't going because I hadn't... The, the, the ore hadn't bombed up sort of thing. So what it had to do was mine some ore just then. Yeah, that's running now, which is good. I can see a present up there, actually. Let's go get that, because that's what we're about right now. And we also wanted more reinforced plate. You can see our little to-do list on the on the right side. And this is my reinforced plate facility. I just, uh, you know, everyone's going to come up with their own idiosyncratic way to theory craft things. I only got plus five then. Oh, man, the different gifts have different yields. And it's cool that it's forcing me to explore a little bit. That's not something I've done a lot in this game. But, um... And there is another deposit here that I will be able to harvest. But what I was just sort of doing, this was my most recent experiment, actually, was like, okay, cool. This is an impure thing. We put down uh, a mine and it will take 30 per minute, right? I've just got tier one belts, which do 60 per minute. So that's fine. So the bottleneck's actually the deposit. And I was like, well, what can I do with that 30 per minute? So we're going in here. It's now smelting the ingots at a rate of 30 per minute anyway, so that's at max sort of efficiency. There's not much you can do. I got it just to split once. This is not an efficient split. This is just a split because I know what's required to make the uh, reinforced plate. And we got some parts going through here, sheets. Now you can see that wants 30 per minute, and that's doing 20 per minute. I think we should be... Well, actually, if you think about it, no, no, no. So this is putting out 30 per minute, and this splitter is halving it because it's only splitting two ways, not three. So this is actually taking 15 per minute. So it's working at half efficiency. It's probably safe to say that this thing's putting out 10 parts per minute. So this is where you'd go, okay, well, maybe we get the other deposit involved. But I was sort of thinking long term, like, what if you've only got one deposit? What can you do there? How can you make the most efficiency out of a lot of splitting in that, you know? So that's doing 10 per minute. Let's try and remember that. And this is cool. This is where I was up to. I just built the thing. I haven't done a, a statistical breakdown yet. All right, so this. This goes at 15 per minute, which is perfect because we're giving it 15 per minute and it puts out 15 per minute. Okay, that's cool. So let's have a look here. The screws. Now this is where I start to get really fucking confused. All right, so this only needs 10 per minute. So we are absolutely overproducing. And you can already see it's bottlenecking. They'll move forward and then they'll stop. Come on. There you go. So this is excessive. So immediately I think to myself, there's a way. There's a way with a complex split here where we only feed this enough to produce the right amount there. And then we can probably bleed that extra amount back into there. Um, but let's just continue. 10 per minute, so it's going at max efficiency. That's putting out 40 parts per minute of bags of screws, right? Cool. So we've got 10 over here and 40 over here, and this is going up into the big machine here, which wants to take um, 30 per minute and 60 per minute. And right now, we've already discussed it's, do it's doing 10 and 40. So we've got a, a big bloody discrepancy. Big discrepancy there. Um, so what can we do about that? Well, like I said, the first things first, we could probably peel off the waste that's going into the rod machine. But then beyond that, you could even try and get them both to like, say, a 50% efficiency. You know, you could you could peel back the screw production even more to try and up the iron plate. We won't get to 100%, but at least we'd get close to a 50-50 a sort of parity of the output. Hmm, it's very interesting. But then, of course, we do have another deposit that will probably get involved in this as well, right? So, maybe we'll do that. Let's do that now. Anyway, like I said, the Fixmas event's there, and it's good to know about, and it's cool, and I'll work towards it. The thing is that, um, I mean, like I said, I've spent five hours getting to this point. Power is a pain in the ass. You would have seen I've got like six biofuel generators that I'm pumping. I've got a biomass production chain, which is to say power at this point in the game, you just take wooden leaves and you put them into a machine. Or you can do it by hand, but bio, really dense biofuel. Yeah, it's called biofuel. 
is actually fucking a pain in the ass to make by hand. Like, it takes a long time. So I've got a machine building the fuel, and then we have to manually put it into each of the six generators as they run out. And then once one runs out, the whole system shuts down because the power spike blows the fuse. So what I'm saying is, we have some serious power problems because I have automated a lot, well and truly to the limit of what we can do with current power. So personally, I really want to tech up to the next power, which is coal power. You can make coal plants with water cooling and all this sort of cool stuff. Um, and that's what we need to use the space elevator for. So as much as I really want to push forward on the Fixmas event now, I think it's going to have to wait for a couple of hours while I get the power situation leveled out. Because the Fixmas event seems very much to call for me to go exploring and looking for all these presents, you know? And I want to do that. Look at them. They're all over the place. Any dropping down now? Maybe they all just drop at the beginning. I think, actually, the world's probably got a whole bunch populated, and this is to force me to go get them. Or maybe even if I go pick them up, maybe they'll start raining down to, re to backfill, you know? Who knows? But for the time being, we need to, um... We need to complete the space elevator milestone. Because this is how you unlock things. It's ultimately a tech tree. Um, and I need to make these sort of metal things that require this. Anyway, so let's go back down. So this could this could get some efficiency upgrades, and it probably will, but it really depends on what we need, you know? At the moment, we actually do need reinforced plate probably more than anything, so that will get my love, you know? Um, I'm really trying to lean into the concept of Try not to build anything by hand. You, you know, at a workbench, you can just manufacture things by hand. It's very slow. It's very inefficient. And it's sort of like, I'm sort of trying to go like, if I'm 10 parts short, bad luck, build another, go find another deposit and shore up the production chain or make it more efficient, you know? All right. So this is what we're doing here. We're trying to make these things. So here we go. I've got plenty of reinforced stuff, but I need more rotors, right? And uh, what is this fucking thing called? Smart plating. Smart plating. And it wants to go into this machine here. And they want 50 smart plating and I've made 23. Alright. So, this is some earlier technology stuff I did. Actually, my, my, my reinforced plate machine was here. I've torn it down because I've gone up to that deposit. So, this is what I was doing previously. This is how I'm making rotors, which require screws and rods, right? But instead of actually having a production chain behind it to produce them, I've just got a storage container that I've been dumping screws and rods into. It's not ideal because this is yet another thing that I'm going to have to fucking supervise, right? In an ideal world, I pull this down, I go find another iron deposit, just like I did up in the hills with the reinforced plate, wherever that is, and I build a rotor factory there as well. That's it, it's made me 38 rotors. And it's cool, because of this, the bottleneck I'm starting to run into is me running around. Well, we just ran out of power, for example, so that's a pain in the ass. Me running around, having to grab all this shit out by hand. And, um... So, like, maybe we want to start bringing things back to, uh, to base on conveyor belts or... Or, um, try and get some vehicles going. All right, so we put leaves in this one. This is what, let's just sort it to make sure. Okay, leaves go in that one and wood goes in this one because there's actually two different biomatter recipes. See that biomass wood and biomass leaves, which makes sense because it's using different ingredients. Then I merge them together because it's the same biomass and I put it through this machine, which makes biofuel, right? And then we pick up the biofuel that we made. So this is sort of the rotation that I have. When the power runs out, I come back, I deposit my leaves and wood into here. I grab the biofuel that it made on the last sort of, let's say, cycle. And now I take this biofuel and I sort of divvy it up and put it into the machines as they need. Usually there'll be just one machine that's kind of shorted out. And it looks like it's this one here. All right? So let's split the pile. Jeez, we're running fairly low. And then we'll flip the fuse. Fuck. Okay. Maybe one of the other machines ran out also. Here we go. Let's put some fuel in there. Put the fuse. That looks good. That looks healthy. And we're back in business, baby. So then I look at this. It's making my plates. How many is it going to do? Two per minute. 
How many more of these do I need? Oh, okay. And actually, this is a good example if you want to lean into the sort of philosophy of the base, right? The bottleneck is this machine's speed. So, I suppose I have two options. I could manhandle these, these parts, or I could build another assembler. We'll clear out the Christmas tree, because we're not going to be able to get that done today. Here we go. And that requires reinforced plate and rotors anyway, so I might be able to pinch them. Alright. Sorry, I just stopped the, uh, the assembler full, full stop. We'll connect that up to... There for the moment. We'll give it a recipe, which is smart plating. And then we'll split the stacks, actually. There you go. Split. 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 Oh, well, actually, I don't need to split them. You can just have the whole lot. And that should help speed that up a little bit. And you get you get full, um... You get full return on your, uh... On your gear, so I can tear these assemblers down just as easily and rebuild them, and it gives me back the one-to-one, -one, you know, uh, resources spent. It is interesting that it takes two parts per minute. I like if we have a power outage, you'll lose that sort of thirty-second-long production chain. Or actually, I think it would be that it actually takes one minute and it creates two parts, not like that it creates one part every thirty seconds. Um, so I wonder if you start to get some things later on where like, like it's a 10 minute thing to build your parts. So you have to really be surge protected because if your power goes out, you're going to lose that progress bar, which would suck. All right. So at this point, we can just keep building more assemblers, I, su I suppose. Um, or we can just wait out. What's the, what's the rate here? Like we said, two per minute. We've got one there. And so if I'm doing two per minute, that's four per minute because of the machines. We currently have this and we need 20 more. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. That's five minutes, right? Okay, that's fine. Might, uh, might go for a bit of an explore. I'll, sh I'll show you around the factory, you know, while we're here. So that's sort of your starting area there. This is a failed experiment. This. This is an overflow shop thing. It's actually very expensive. And what I'm thinking more and more of doing is I'm in, I'm in the habit of putting a, you would have seen at the reinforcement plate area, or even here with the biofuel, I use sh shipping containers quite liberally as a choke bottleneck relief. The whole point is that it can just keep churning out biofuel into here, right? Add infinum and run and it won't stop. The problem with this machine here is it only has one slot to hold. So if I didn't put this belt and container on the end, if this got to 100, it'll stop production. It will stop receiving goods. And that's no good. We don't want that. We want the, the factory never sleeps, right? So you got to put a bottleneck on the end of this. But what I was thinking, I know it seems a little bit strange, but what if you managed to fill this whole thing up? And I thought to myself, there's no scenario where I will need more than that storage. Maybe there is later, but like I think that's a reasonable sort of storage amount for any resource, metal plates, fucking ore, whatever. So I thought, what if I try and come up with some sort of way to put the uh, the ticket machine? That's what that is over there. It's an overflow machine. So any of your waste resources you're not using, you can send into a belt into that machine and it will turn them into a currency it's like, it's cents on the dollar, right? It's very, very weak currency, but it's a way to unlock other things from a shop. Um, so I'm trying to come up with a, a way to maybe have the overflow go into the shop or whatever. Now, that won't really work because if I put a belt here straight to the shop, it will just drain the entire thing. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure. I don't know if there's a technology in this game, some sort of... I don't know how to, how to comprehend it in the words of conveyors, but like almost like a pressure relief valve 
when it came comes to like gases and that sort of stuff. Almost like if this manages to back up, have a splitter kick in to split it off to the to the dumping grounds. Hmm. I mean. I mean, what if I had a, like, a reverse loop, a splitter, there, and it splits it in half? No, no, that would just drain the line anyway. But anyway, that's something for me to think about anyway. Like I said, th this is just another episode. It just happens to have jumped forward a couple of hours. So it's a bit of me bringing you up to speed. And a bit of me still obviously playing the game, trying to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. I, I, I'm interested to see what we can do with these these conveyor lifts. That will be exciting. As anyone who's seen me play Oxygen Not Included, I like doing Jeffrey's tubes. I like having like maintenance pathways. And so what this was, was me starting to play with the idea of what if we had everything on the second floor, like I live on the second floor, the factories are on the second floor. And maybe we feed the conveyor belts underneath and we have a hidden floor underneath, which is just all conveyor all the time. It's just a thought. Anyway, so we're out of power there. Cool. So, yeah, this is where we're at. I'm up to the space elevator. I'll show you my milestone. This is where you start, basically. Tier 1, uh, 0 and 1, you skip from the tutorial. But essentially, I unlocked all of these by sending my resources to this machine. And now we've run out and in order to do the next tier, we need to build the space elevator. So once that unlocks, um, we might be actually really close. Even though we just ran out of power, fuck me. Is there any way I can just push this over the line? Um, seven? Seven. Oh, did that actually hold the progress bar? It might have. Six more. All right, we'll do that. And uh, and maybe it'll show me the unlock table for the space elevator. Because they've moved everything around. There used to be gantries, like little walkways in the early, early days. I played this when it came out at early access at the very beginning. And... I liked using them. They were just little tiny walkways and it made it feel like a factory more. So, and unfortunately, I can't unlock them at the moment. Same as these walls. You used to be able to get them with door frames and bloody um, conveyor belt holes, but they've seemed to have moved that away as well. So I'm assuming it's in the space elevator. Maybe it's in the MAM. I have to research it. I'm not sure. But, um, all right, we'll wait for it. How much more did it need? Six, I think. And, um, yes, there's been a lot of changes. They've just recently announced that they're going to have a big update change early next year, uh, like in the first quarter or so. That's going to really fuck with the late game production. Um, so that won't affect me too much, I don't think. It depends how much hours I get in. Um, I do remember they changed the way a lot of the conveyor belt, the, the production works, which is so good. It used to just be a steady, it was always like one resource per X. But now it's quite often like at the end of uh, two minutes, it will pop out two resources, which really kind of it messed with uh, the way that the production works, you know. So you didn't necessarily just have this steady flow of evenly spaced things. You'd have now you have like two, 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 and it becomes, um, you know, another problem for you to sort of sort out. So there's been a lot of changes. All right, let's uh, load that in. Seal. Oh, that's cool. I haven't used a space elevator in forever. Send it, baby. Nice. See you, mate. So that wasn't technically a milestone. I think that was just essentially to unlock, like I had to buy, use all the resources to build this fucking thing. But I think by paying that premium, I will now unlock the space elevator tree. Hard to tell. It's not like I have a timer on the screen. Usually you get a timer for milestones. What's going on? I'll just stand here and watch it for a bit. All right, what happens if I talk to it? Oh, here we go. 
Space Elevator Resource Delivery 2. Delivery will unlock tiers 5 and 6. Oh, okay. So this is going to unlock entire tiers by making that delivery. So that first delivery probably unlocked tier 3 and 4 for me to just do in the traditional sense, which is in here in the main area. Hey, here we go. Tier 3 and 4. What do we got? Coal power. Oh, daddy. Daddy talks sweetly to me. This is what we want. Look at this. Piping and coal gener... And they never used to take water back in my day, so we're going to have to... Fluid buffer? Jeez, dealing with water is going to be interesting. Transport. Tractors and truck station. It's interesting that it's called a, not a tractor station. Huh. Okay. Man, awesome. I want tracks. I, I like them because you can actually AI waypoint them as well. Um, what else we got here? Basic steel production, steel ingots, steel beams. Oh, cool. And and we saw this this item was over in uh, to unlock the next milestone. And then tier four, what's going on here? Advanced steel production. Miner Mark II, that's exciting. Normal extraction rate is 120 resources per minute. This extraction rate is modified depending on the resource. Okay. All right, that's cool. Oh, the normal rate for this. That makes sense. I think if you get a pure resource with the base one, it's 60. We were getting 30 because we had an impure one. Encased beams, a stator. Hmm, look at this. Automated wiring. Okay. What about this? Xeno basher. Oh, that could be good. And another hand slots, more inventory. Hyper tube. I've heard about these things. They're little bloody transport tubes like out of the Jetsons or Future Armor. Just get in one of them. That's cool. That'd be very handy. Industrial storage container. Look at that. Oh, I didn't know this sort of thing existed. Better conveyor belts. Stackable pipeline support. All right, we got a lot of toys to play with there. Very exciting. Anyway, so that's Factorio. Like I said, oh, Factorio, what the fuck am I saying? Stay uh, satisfactory. I should play some Factorio as well. I've barely touched that game too. That's just the 2D cousin of this. Anyway, Satisfactory. This is what a five-hour factory looks like from someone that I think is mildly competent but doesn't really know what he's doing. It's not like I've played through into the high tiers. This is all new to me. Um, be aware of the Christmas event. Get into it. But like I said, if you're starting out a brand new factory and all that, the Christmas event might not be that helpful to you. Like I said, I'm five hours in and I'm not really ready to abandon my power unit because it's just not stable enough to run around and collect bloody presents all over the map. Um, that's probably another few hours. So maybe if you've got like a, a seven hour factory or something like that, or if you rushed coal power, then the event would be for you. And that makes sense. The event's probably for the existing fan base. But yeah, let me know if you don't know much about this game and I sort of put it on your radar and, and you found this interesting, especially this format. Um, this way I can still get episodes out sort of semi-frequently on games that maybe aren't, you know, super top tier on the channel. Um, and let me know if you want to see some more, because I'd be happy to put out more episodes more often if this is well received too. Alright team, thanks again for joining me. I might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.